Hey, it's me, Vicky Marie. <clears throat> Hope, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And in today's video, I'm just going to talk to you about these three boys or three men, they are men, um, uh, who unfortunately went missing in Mexico, went on holiday to Mexico, surfing, they're surf mad and uh, went on holiday to Mexico and then they disappeared, you know, well, no contact with their families. So their families were worried about them. And anyway, unfortunately, <coughs> they have been found or fortunately they've been found in one way. But unfortunately, because these poor boys, they have been shot and found dumped in a well in Mexico. And not only that, there was already another body in there after these boys were put in there. Nobody knows who that is yet. And that body, that poor unfortunate soul is thought to have been there for a little while longer. So I'm going to light my candle today for, well, for the three, uh, two Australian boys or men. I, I shouldn't say boys. It's just that, you know, at my age, they are like boys. The, the American man that was with them, their friend, and also whoever the other unfortunate soul is who was in the um, who was in the well. So let's hear something about this story. So I've sort of seen it. It's been on the periphery of, uh, you know, my feeds, but there's always so many other things going on. But then when I heard that they had been found and unfortunately, they, you know, that they were deceased, um, I thought it's important to do this video because I think people, when you have children, you're always waiting for the next stage, aren't they? Aren't you? You know, when they're little and you think, oh, uh, when they're a baby, you think, oh, well, when they can walk and when they can talk and then they walk and talk and then you wish they couldn't walk and talk again because suddenly you've got the terrible twos and it's, oh, my God, it's like they're so quick and you're rushing around after them, you're worrying about them then. Uh, and you think, oh, when they're a bit older, you know, that'll be better because it'd be, um, you know, you won't have to worry so much about them running off or doing this or doing that. And then they get a little bit older and then you have other things to worry about. Then suddenly, you know, when they get that bit older again, then the bullying starts at school, for example. Because I think with very little kids, very small kids, you don't get that bullying, do, do you? You know, kids all love each other until they get a little bit older, around about the eight mark and then some of the other kids start being a bit nasty or a bit funny with them and then you've got all that problem and then you think oh well when they're a bit older and then of course they go to high school then it gets worse again uh, then they get older and they've got boyfriend or girlfriend problems and you think oh well when they're older and they'll be more independent and then uh, they get married and then maybe they get divorced or oh you know so children as lovely as it is to have children, I always think that from the minute you give birth, all you do is worry. So when your children, even though they're 30 years old, as these men were, or around about that age, they're still your babies, they're still your children. When they tell you they're going to go off to Mexico on holiday, I don't know how their parents felt about it, but I think my heart would just sink because to me, I just think of Mexico as a very, very dangerous country. Uh, I would, you know, I'm sorry, and nothing to do with the most of the normal people in Mexico that are lovely people, but you know, just because of all the problems there um, with drugs, cartels, gangs. You know, there are a lot of problems and human life is cheap in Mexico. I'm sorry, but it is. And somebody wants to tell me it isn't, but it is. And things happen there. It's a dangerous place in my eyes. Now, I know that there's a lot of dangerous places in the world and anywhere is dangerous in a way, especially cities. But really, it doesn't matter where you are. You could be in a you know little village somewhere, quiet place where nothing ever nearly really ever happens and something could happen. And I do know that. I understand that. Uh, but if if people are going to go to 
these places what what i think the the thing that i'm wanting to tell this story for the reason that i want to tell it it's not only for parents i mean there's nothing you can do if your 30 year old son tells you he's going to go off to mexico surfing what are you going to say oh no you can't go i mean you, you can't do that can you you know that's your unfortunately that's your job lot as a parent as it gets older to be completely have no control whatsoever about what's going on in your child's life even though you still worry about them just to stay same still think about them uh, as children they're always you know i remember being sort of annoyed with my mum and dad you know treating me like a kid you know and I was 21 and I knew everything you know uh, but then now I understand that that is what parents do you are always uh, a baby in your parents eyes so the moral of this story if you like or the reason that I'm t uh, telling this story is not only for for any of you out there who are thinking of going to a country like Mexico or any country where there may be problems, especially with robberies and um, things like that. For me, I think what I'm trying to say, and even if, you know, I live in Spain, for those of you who know my channel, I should introduce myself freely with every video, because of course, not everybody who's watching this video has even maybe watched one of my videos before, but my name's Vicky. I live in Spain and uh, I do videos about true crime and, um, so if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and don't forget to like the video. I always forget to say these things. So, but the point is, yeah, even if you come to Spain, you go to Madrid, uh, go to the capital, anywhere in Spain, there are robberies, there are pickpocketers, um, there are, um, what's the word, what, bag snatchers, you know, there's, <clears throat> crime can happen to you anywhere and I accept that. But there are some places, uh, uh, although crime does happen in Spain, it's very unusual for it to be violent crime. Now, of course, you could go to the UK. The UK's got a lot of knife crime. You know, not necessarily gun crime, but knife crime. In America, you've got a lot of gun crime because guns are freely available. <clears throat> and now, there seems to have been a lot of problems with knife crime in Australia recently. So I know it can happen to you anywhere, but there are some things... You just have to be aware of that if you go to a country that's got a reputation for, you know, even in the, although it can happen anywhere, but some countries have got a, a worse reputation than others. And the thought that people may have guns. So if somebody tries to rob your phone or your car, or apparently this issue was about the tyres on the car, if that can be believed, believe it or not, just give them them. Don't argue with them. It is just not worth it. If you go to, if you do go to Mexico, my personal advice would be not to go to Mexico. But if you want to go to Mexico for the surfing or for whatever the reason is, go being aware. Whichever country you go to, do your homework before you go. What are the areas that you've got to be careful of? South Africa, that's another country that's quite dangerous, isn't it? You know, you the, the problem is when you go to a different country that you don't know, most of us know the dangerous areas where we live, don't we? We know the areas you wouldn't mm, go to at night and the areas that you would feel safe. Now, I had a... So, again, for those of you who don't know me, I do teach Spanish. I'm a Spanish teacher as well as doing a YouTube channel on true crime. But... Um, I had a student who was training to be an eye specialist, a doctor, an eye doctor. And uh, they were really happy because they won a, like an inter internship grant. They were granted an internship at a famous eye hospital in London. And she was so excited, this girl. She was Polish originally, but she was learning to be a doctor here in Spain and she because she can speak english uh, she applied to go to this very famous eye hospital in london uh, that's apparently renowned all over the world and she she was successful so basically what she won was like a say won what she was awarded was like a 3 month 
uh, bursary and experience and training at this hospital. <laughs> so she's so excited. She was actually not learning Spanish with me. She was learning English with me. Not learning English because she spoke English, but perfecting her English with me. So she was so excited, looking forward to it. And then she told me where she was going to be staying in London. And it was Brixton. Now, I don't know a lot about London, but I know that Brixton, like most London's uh, areas, because London is a capital city, you know, capital cities have problems with crime. And I think people look at it from the outside, like we might look at, I don't know, Rio de Janeiro and think, oh, oh, it's beautiful, you know, and or Sydney or, you know, some big city and you, you're lost in the romance of it. But we don't know the places to avoid. It won't all be, uh, you know, dangerous places, but there will be some places, there's places in Manchester, no-go areas for the police even, you know, and if you didn't know Manchester, you wouldn't know. You could just, you know, quite happily just sort of troll there one you know, trolling there one night, wandering around as if, you know, from pub to pub, not realising that you're in an area that's really quite dangerous. So this is, so when this uh, girl told me this, and I said, oh, you've got to be careful, you know, but I was trying to sort of give her some advice. She was absolutely incredulous because a lot of foreign people uh, think of, England you know they've seen four weddings in a funeral or they've you know seen um the crown or what they think you know the English people just sit and have tea high tea and you know don't ever there's no crime they don't really it might sound ludicrous but it's absolutely true you know it is true because they you get an impression if you've never been to a place you get an impression of a place from how it is on the TV. You know, we do of foreign countries, you know. Now, if you're English from England, you know about England, you know about, or if you're from Scotland, you know about Scotland. If you're from Wales, you know about Wales. If you're from Carolina, you know about Carolina or New York, you know about New York. You know the places to avoid. You know, the, you know, you, you, there's nothing better than being shown around a place by a local you know i went to barcelona i had a friend there and he i think i would have struggled in barcelona otherwise because he told me you know the places uh, uh, that were a little bit dangerous where you could get your uh, your purse stolen or you this you know so this is what i'm trying to say local knowledge is important so i explained to this girl you know just be careful uh you know told her the and but she was absolutely she would never have even occurred to her there'll be places in poland where she was from that are dangerous that i wouldn't know i'd go to poland i'd be wandering around not knowing what's you know this is the the point that i'm trying to put across so if you do go to mexico go do your homework find out the place where you're safe where you're not safe you may be not safe to go wild camping in Mexico or there would be places in the UK or anywhere where you're not really safe to go wild camping which I think these boys were doing but anyway so I keep calling them boys they're not boys the men but so let's just have a look at the background of it I've sort of waffled on enough but I hope you understand where I'm coming from you know what the what uh, uh, I'm trying I'm trying to give a warning if you like just be careful when you go to foreign countries that you don't know the area, you don't know much about it, do your homework, find out. And if you're robbed, let them take it. Honestly, that would, you have to, there's no point in fighting over a phone or a car or anything, really. Only your life is worth fighting for. Okay, so let's just have a look at this then. So we're on the BBC website, 
and the, apparently it's a likely carjacking says mexico this is what met this was six hours ago from when i make this video these are the australian brothers now I, I don't know if i've seen a photo of their friend but anyway so this is callum on the left and jake robinson and their lovely dog in the middle the dog will be missing them as well so three tourists found dead in mexico were shot in the head and their bodies were dumped in a well, authorities have confirmed. Officials believe the men were attacked, trying to stop the theft of their pickup truck. Australian brothers Jake and Callum Robinson, 30 and 33, I mean, you know, in the prime of their lives, and their American friend Jack Carter Road, 30, disappeared on the 27th of April, while they were on a surfing trip in Ensenada. Relatives of the three men identified their bodies on Sunday after travelling to Mexico to assist authorities. I mean, can you imagine it, having to go well, from Australia to Mexico? That's a hell of a trip, I would imagine, um, just to identify your two sons. I, I just, that poor family, I just can't get my head around it. Anyway, this was this was what they went for, the surfing, and the surfers have paid a tribute. Um, let's sit, have a look at the video. Normalmente quienes tenemos mujeres, eh, miedo son, somos las mujeres, perdón. Y pues ahora sucedió con estos tres jóvenes, hombres, ¿no? Entonces me siento más vulnerable, siento que estamos más vulnerables, ahora sí todos. Me da mucho impotencia, mucho enojo. Oh. So, yeah, there's a tribute that was made by the surfers. So the attackers wanted the vehicle for its tyres and they shot the tourists when they resisted. Baca, California, state prosecutor Maria Andrade suggested. Now, of course, this is what they don't know, I suppose. And Now, there have been arrests made, so maybe the people that have been arrested have, have said what happened. They're, but no, the horrible, the, well, it's all horrible, but uh, even more horrible thing is their bodies were found in a four metre, 15 foot deep well, about six kilometres, four miles from the site of the attack in the sound, uh, town of Santo Tomas on Friday. Abandoned tents, a burnt white pickup truck and a phone linked to the missing surfers were found nearby. And then a fourth body was found in the well. I still, you just think, God, how many people are unaccounted for? Um, and at least I hope that this body is identified and their family let know what's happened to their loved one who will have disappeared. But uh, that body had been there longer and it was unconnected to this case. Two men and a woman have been detained on suspicion of direct or indirect involvement in the attack. One man with, uh, with a previous criminal record has been charged with forced disappearance. Earlier, the FBI said it was looking into the case and was in touch with international partners. Now, here we go. Baca, California is one of Mexico's most violent states. Local drug gangs fight turf wars. So, you know, even if they weren't coming for you, you could get caught up in something. You know, I just, to me, it just, there's some countries I just won't go anywhere near, to be honest. In 2023, it had the country's second highest murder rate after the state of, of uh, Guanajuato, according to official figures. National Defence Secretary Louis, Luis Crescencio Sandoval said earlier this year that 85 to 90% of murders committed in Baja California were linked to drug trafficking and organised crime. 
but the Ensenada area, about 120 kilometers, 75 miles south of the US-Mexico border and known for its surfing conditions, is considered safer and has long attracted tourists from California. The brothers' parents, Deborah and Martin Robinson, said Callum had been living in the US, chasing his dream of becoming a professional lacrosse player. Jake was on the trip of a lifetime to visit him before starting a new job in Victoria as a doctor, they said on Friday. Callum and Jake are beautiful human beings. We love them so much and this breaks our heart. Friends of the brothers have also flooded social media with tributes. Callum's teammates at Stevenson University Lacrosse Club said the athlete was a larger-than-life personality. With his beautiful long hair and charming smile, he truly embodied the nickname Big Koala. <laughs> Warm, friendly and always there to lend a helping hand, a statement from the club said. His girlfriend Emily Horworth said her heart was shattered into a million pieces. I don't have the words right now, I will love you forever. She wrote in a post on Instagram, Instagram alongside pictures of the couple. Carter Road's social media account showed happy snaps of him proposing to his partner less than a year ago. A fundraiser set up by friends of his family said the Robinson brothers had brought immeasurable joy, love and kindness to the world. Australian treasurer Jim Chalmers said the country was thinking of the Robinson family. It has been an absolutely horrendous, absolutely horrific ordeal and our thoughts are with all of them today, he said at a news conference on Monday. So these killings have sparked fear and anger in the Ensenada region. Scores of protesters marched through the city on Sunday, carrying surfboards plastered with slogans written in Spanish. They only wanted to surf. We demand safe beaches, one said. Australia, we are with you, another said. A group of surfers later performed a paddle-out ceremony, an ocean vigil to honour the trio. It's not the first time that Australian surfers have been killed while holidaying in Mexico. Gosh. In 2006, Dean Lewis and Adam Coleman were murdered in northwestern Sinaloa state when they fought back during an attempted uh, robbery. So, the, you know, I'm sorry, you, you should be able to fight back, but I think the, the message, if there is, you know, a, a lesson to be learned, um, is you can't fight back. You can't fight back against these people because they don't care about human life. They don't take human life seriously. And if you try to stop them doing what they want to do, they'll kill you. Anyway, their bodies were found in their burnt-out camper van weeks later. So on X, the platform formerly known as Twitter, Mexico's foreign ministry said that Mexico's ambassador to Australia had travelled to Baja California to work with uh, Australian consular officials and help the families of the victims. So State Department figures show that at least 1.6 million, that's a lot, isn't it? 1.6 million US citizens live in Mexico, which is also the top destination for US tourists globally with more than 30 million visitors in 2022. So in 2022, uh, the last year for which State Department um, data is fully available, 192 Americans died in Mexico, of which 46 were ruled as homicides. Yeah. Very sad. So this is where the bodies were found. So it's quite a little way from um, where the attack was. So they've driven, that's probably their dumping ground. So they took flowers, the surfers, and put them into the water. 
Okay, so we're going to have a look at a couple of videos, a couple of news videos about this. Are still being held in police stations here at Ansarda. <laughs> But first to breaking news and charges are expected in the murder investigation that is underway in Mexico this morning after bodies were found near where the two Australian brothers went missing. Live now to US correspondent Miley Hogan in Ensenada in Mexico. Miley, one person has already been charged. Yeah, Matt, that's right. One man has been formally charged with a crime equivalent of kidnapping. It's understood that he's now been processed and transferred to a prison in Ensenada. It's understood the other two, a man and a woman, are still being held in police stations here at Ensenada and being questioned as investigators try to determine their level of involvement in this crime. The Attorney General of Baja California has given more details about the investigation, uh, saying that police believe that this was a robbery gone wrong that these people were attempting to steal the car of the three boys and then well looking at that i wouldn't have said that the police would have found that without somebody telling them where it was what do you think i mean you know it's miles away from anywhere it's right on the coast I'm surprised they didn't throw him into the sea really but i suppose there's always a chance that they might wash up um but somebody's Somebody's given that information, I think. I can't imagine that the police would have found that by accident unless they followed their phone signals, phone data, but it seems a bit quick for them to get hold of that. But maybe one of the people that, that have been arrested did end up saying what had happened to the bodies details about the investigation uh, saying that police believe that this was a robbery gone wrong that these people were attempting to steal the car of the three boys and then there's been a confrontation when they tried to get the vehicle the victims opposed the robbery the robbers were armed with a firearm and then apparently shot the victim Yesterday, Mexican authorities located four bodies in a well in a remote stretch of coastland south of Ensenada. Police believe that three of the bodies do belong to the missing Perth brothers, Jake and Callum Robinson, and their American friend, Jack Carter Road. The fourth body that was discovered at the bottom of that well, authorities do not believe that it is linked to this case. Uh, the three boys were on a surfing trip when they did not check into their accommodation, their family raising the alarm. It uh, sparked this mass investigation. Uh, now, these bodies have not been formally identified, but a number of people close to the boys have been putting tributes online as well. We know that the Robinson family is now making their way to Mexico for that gut-wrenching task of helping police formally identify these bodies, guys. Yeah, what an incredibly difficult trip. Uh, thank you very much to Miley Hogan for us there in Mexico. To more breaking news out of Melbourne now, homicide detectives are investigating the death of a man after a... So, that's one article. Let's, uh, we're going to have a look at a couple. Uh, now, in this, the, the, I just want to tell you, the guy that the, that's been interviewed here, his English is not brilliant. And I, I sort of undernod about whether to um show this but yeah I, I think it's important what he's got to say it's interesting what he's got to say our story in our interview now on that uh, shooting in mexico that has claimed the lives of two australians and an american as well joining me live is mexican journalist shiro malaykim i hope we've got you now to shiro what can you tell us what's the latest there on the ground from what you found out in authorities as well hello tom um I hope you hear me well. Well, in, in Mexico, in Senado, California, we are very concerned about what happened uh, with this uh, fellow uh, Australian brothers who was found dead. Um, today, the family came to Ensenada and recognized the bodies of these uh, two brothers. Uh, and well, the official version of the attorney uh, Attorney General Office in Mexico says there was a robbery who falls, and these this robbers uh, must uh, have the 
to kill them because they don't want uh, any witness of the, 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 this, this is criminal act. Um, well, um, this, this day, the surfer uh, community of Mexico, of Ensenada, and uh, the states came and uh, made kind of floral offer, offering to these fallen surfers. Uh, we have to remember this, uh, two Australians and one uh, American who was killed in, 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 in this, uh, in this uh, event. Uh, however, uh, the Attorney's General Office has uh, a little bit of issues in the official version because there's uh, a very search. They, they claim this uh, a, foul, a failed robbery and uh, the two bodies, well, the three bodies have a bullet in the back of the brain. So it's a traditional execution in Mexico. Uh, yeah. the, the area so this is what's was... got a lot of attention. Just just to jump in there to Shiro, because as you say, it has. Yeah, so that's interesting what you're saying. So you're saying the way they were shot in the back of the head, that's like a traditional execution, Mexican execution style. So was it? Were they killed in a you know like in a struggle, in a scuffle that with somebody? shooting someone in the back of the head like that oh, you know maybe there's more to this story maybe it wasn't just a simple carjacking a lot of people talking about organized crime the conclusion around what happened here was reached very quickly it seems by the attorney general what what do you make of that is this a, you know a very small time frame for the attorney general to, to seem to be fairly certain about what happened uh, yeah, certainly it's uh, um, a very short uh, lap of time. Uh, an unofficial version uh, claims the three suspects as was in custody uh, had to be confess the crime and the, the way they commit the crime. So uh, that's a make suppose the attorney they give this version so quickly. Uh, the other way, was, uh, other way to see this is the personal uh, international pressure uh, put it into Mexican authorities. Uh, this, that is was that is one. Sorry about my English is a little bit frosted. Um, this is one of the most uh, popular versions. The Mexican attorney uh, have. So that woman that you just saw, she's one of the people that's been arrested. She's only 23 years old. She's 23 years old and she's been arrested. I don't think she's been charged with anything yet, but, um, you know, she knew something. She's been arrested. It just seems, I don't know, uh, hmm, doesn't it? So young. The... Mexican attorney uh, have uh, much pressure from the states and Australian uh, authorities to well, make uh, a solution of right. this, this crime. Uh, in a regular yeah. way in Mexico, uh, Mexico we, we have uh, about a, a 30K of uh, uh, people who is missing and uh, the, the groups of uh, yeah. Of. 30,000 people missing. They're probably all down those wells. Well, there's one they've just found. Gosh. Uh, personal, uh, sorry, of uh, personas desaparecidas, missing persons in Mexico are very upset because uh, they think it's a preference on the lives of the um, foreigners and the Mexicans yeah. who get lost or uh, disappeared in Mexico. Yeah, there's I know there's big lists of locals that are uh, that are missing, and obviously it's, it's drawn attention to this area, which, in on the one hand, has... yeah. So all the locals that are missing, they've probably not even been looked for. But as I said, they've found one of them by the sound of it in that well. 
So at least, you know, there's probably a bit of um, probably a bit disgruntled that you know the local people have never been looked for or just and that because these boys are tourists, Australian and American tourists, there's been more attention, more uh, maybe urgency in finding out what's happened to them. And you know, to be fair, that at least they've found out what's happened to them, even though it's not a good result. But at least they know what's happened to them um but maybe it's still it's you know it's still a good thing because it's just going to bring attention isn't it to the area and that's got to be good as these luxury hotels and get away from the tourist strip and a lot of problems with organized crime uh we appreciate your time today to share thank you thank you very much tom and this is what we found uh, today in Ensenada. So there you go. That's another news item, a news thing. So we'll look at one more. Nine news. And the American pushback, there was a struggle, and that is when shots were fired. Local media pushing back on that this morning, asking how this investigation could be completed so quickly. The Attorney General not really having any answers in that regard. But look, as you mentioned, we are at a protest. Uh, as they are standing in solidarity uh, for Australia today, guys. Uh, let's hear from one of the organisers. This is Fernando. Mates, we love you, Aussies. Mexico is your house, and we are really regretting what, what's happening. It's, um, it's really a pity. I know you guys are we're, we're good people. You are good people. We love you guys. Yeah, a, a beautiful sentiment from Fernando and a sentiment that we have had from all Mexicans uh, since we have arrived here in Mexico last week. There's the Mexican flag there just going past. Uh, this morning, uh, Kevin and Jake's parents, Deborah and Martin, met with the Attorney General of Baja in Tijuana. They did some paperwork and they are making their way here now to Ensenada to uh, identify the bodies. Carl and Sarah. That's awful, Jim. Yeah. Ali, thank you. Fear. Welcome back. Well, three Mexican nationals are this morning facing kidnapping charges following the disappearance and suspected murder of Australian brothers Callum and Jake Robinson and their American friend. For more, we're live to Mexico City, where security experts... I mean, that poor family, so they've lost two of their sons, to, you know, in one fell swoop. They had to go all the way to Mexico to identify their bodies. I mean... Do you know, they, I tell you what, the, the candle, the candle, it's for them as well. Just awful. My prayers just go out to them. But Anna Maria Salazar joins us now. Um, Anna Maria, thank you so much for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Um, look, there are more details coming out um, that this may have been a robbery gone wrong. Uh, is that what you're hearing? Yes, I, uh, I anchor a TV show here in Mexico. Uh, where I had the opportunity on Friday night to speak to the Attorney General of Baja California, which is a state where this uh, this murder took place. And uh, according to her, they had, when, once they were able to find these individuals, as you know, they were able to identify who was per probably behind this kidnapping and what it appears to be murder, is because they found the cell phone of one of the uh, these young men that was murdered on this on a woman and this woman who apparently participated uh, in this uh, in this kidnapping murder. So once they found her, they were able to identify two more individuals. And it, it appears, according to the attorney general on on Friday night, that it appears that what they were after were these uh, were were their pickup. Uh, they wanted to get their tires and just kind of change the tires. They thought they would be able to do it without them knowing it. And uh, and once the once they they defended themselves and they tried to stop this from happening, apparently, according to the attorney general, this was on Friday night. They 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 they, they killed them. It seems like such a violent escalation, uh, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, are these kinds of criminal acts common in this particular area? We know that it is violent and there have been warnings for tourists travelling through there. There is there is warning for tourists and, and it, uh, this area, uh, this part of the country is on the US. Oh, there's all the three that have been arrested. I don't know why they've blurred her face out because we've just seen her face as clear as anything. Um, gosh, it's, it's so terrifying, isn't it? Really, if it really was just about tires, you know, how cheap is life? 
for them to do that and that surely they would know um maybe well there's sort of people are saying that they were high on drugs them you know these guys were high on drugs because really if they were thinking responsibly uh you know they would realize that murdering three tourists an american tourist and two australians is going to pretty much bring the wrath of everything down on you isn't it you know um maybe they just were so drugged up they just didn't even think about it us mexican border and we have a lot of american tourists that come to surf it's a beautiful pair i can't even describe to you how beautiful it is and there are warnings that you have to be careful and preferably not to be alone in some of these areas and it was isolated there was nobody else was there and and it is violent uh and it is surprising and even from mexican standards this is actually very very shocking but mexico is going through a relatively high um, violence uh, wave right now, and it's uh, it's a terrible tragedy. It's just it's so awful. Um, you mentioned those elections. Um, and you mentioned um, how uh, even by Mexican standards, this mm. is um, this is just shocking. But what what comes from this? Um, I, I would figure that given that they're Australian um, and an American involved, there's going to be a little bit of pressure brought to bear. Is that the case? Yes, and in fact, the, the 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 one of the reasons I believe that these individuals were identified so fast and they were able to figure out who probably did it and they were arrested was because of international pressure. Uh, you know, the, the the mother sending these messages out, trying to find her sons, and the fact that the FBI got involved relatively soon, according to the attorney general. Mm. They were involved in the investigation almost immediately. And it had to do with this American man, uh, Carter, who was uh, who was uh, with the uh, with the, uh, with the Robinson brothers. So I, the, the FBI was involved. There's a lot of pressure from the United States, the US government, the US embassy, the Australian government, the Australian uh, embassy. They, they, I think they pretty much know who did it and there's going to be a trial and they are probably going to be convicted. Mm. All right, and we appreciate um, you spending some time with us here in Australia. Thank you so much. Morning, folks. So wherever you're waking up across the country, we wanted to get straight to new details on those Perth brothers missing in Mexico. Overnight, the parents of Callum and Jake Robinson touching down in the region as police give an update on the murder investigation. Nine correspondent Alison Petrowski joins us live from Ensenada. Ali, we've just heard from authorities. Yeah, and I'll get to that in, the mo in a moment, guys. But as you mentioned, Carl, uh, the parents of Jake and Callum Robinson, Deborah and Martin, have touched down in Mexico. A little earlier this morning, they met with Baja's Attorney General. We understand that the Australian ambassador to Mexico was also there. They filled in some paperwork and they are making their way right now to Ensenada, where they will go through the process of formally identifying wow. the bodies. Uh, some horrific detail being released uh, in the autopsy report this morning, the way these three bodies were recovered out of that well. And guys, I say three bodies still because the, uh, they have not been identified as it stands as we go to air, but the autopsy revealing that all three victims suffered gunshot wounds to the head. They were shot execution style. Now, the Attorney General held in the last hour. It has just wrapped up. She's maintaining that this is a robbery gone wrong, that this was an opportunistic moment from three Mexican nationals who seized upon the two Aussies and their American friend at that remote campsite, that they wanted their youth. Uh, and that the Aussies and the Americans pushed back, that they fought in some way, and that is how they were killed. That is the line she is maintaining this morning. I've got to say that the local journalists in the press conference really pushed back on that. They're saying, how on earth can you figure this out so quickly? Uh, how have you conducted this investigation so fast? And also, why was there a fourth body in the well that was recovered? The Attorney General says that was not related. But uh, more questions than answers, really, from the Attorney General this morning, guys. Uh, we are here right now at a demonstration at Ensenada Plaza. Local surfers are gathering here. Yeah, it does seem all very quick and it's all very, you know, is there more to it? But, you know, if there is more to it, I don't think it will come out, to be honest. Um, they'll just be saying, well, they found these boys quickly. They've solved the case. They've got three people in custody. Um, you know, somebody has given away where the bodies were. So, you know, it's... It, you should be thinking, oh, the police have done well, but seems like people are thinking there's more to it. 
here behind me. They are meeting here before they go out on a paddle out uh, at San Miguel Beach a little later. But basically, they are protesting against the violence in this region and also standing in solidarity with Australians. All right, Alan, thank you. All right, so there's just one more thing I want to show you. And I'll tell you, it, it, it's just a repetition of the story, really. But this is the picture of the third man, the American guy. Uh, Jack Carter Road, which there's been so many photos of the Australian boys um, and not so many photos of him around. So I just wanted to show you the photo of Jack. So basically the lesson, if you like, or why the reason why I particularly wanted to do this uh, video is because, yeah, just to be careful to anybody who's traveling in not only Mexico, wherever you're going, do your homework first, find out, you know, where are the safe places, the unsafe places, you know, is there a high crime there? You know, should you be worried? What should you be worried about? And even if you are like young men like this, you know, don't think you're invincible because you think you can look after yourself because nobody can look after themselves against a gun, can they? So he's just saying here about that chief state prosecutor that we saw, Maria Elena uh, Andrade Ramirez. So she said, um, that was that be comforting for the family, describe what likely would have been moments of terror that ended the trip for brothers Jake and Callum Robinson from Australia an American Jack Carter Road, and she theorised that killers drove by, saw the foreigners pick up truck and tents and wanted to steal their tyres. But when the foreigners came up and caught them, surely they resisted, and that's when they would have shot them. And she then said they allegedly went to what is she called a site that is extremely hard to get to, and allegedly dumped the bodies into a well they apparently were familiar with. Well, they must have been if there was already a body in there to start with. She said investigators were not ruling out the possibility the same suspects also dumped the first earlier body in the well as part of previous crimes. Uh, crimes. Well, unless it be a hell of a coincidence if, the, if they didn't have anything to do with the first body and they just happened to dump these three bodies in the the exact same well where there was already a body. Uh, I don't think you need to be a detective to work that out, really. And then the thieves allegedly covered the well with boards. It was literally almost um, impossible to find it, and it took two hours to winch the bodies out of the well. How sad. Um, some, yeah, somebody said where that well is, they would not have found it by accident. So Australian Treasurer Jim Chalmers expressed sympathy for the Robinson family. Yeah, so they've been posting on Instagram from the last photo post, the trip looked perfect. But even experienced local expats are questioning whether it is safe to camp along the largely deserted coast anymore. Yeah, well, obviously, no. I know people like an adventure. It says here, adventure was the key to the victim's lifestyle. He said, uh, Callum Robinson said on his Instagram account, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. Yeah. And then, yeah, uh, Anrade Ramirez was questioned by one reporter who expressed approval that such a massive and rapid search was mounted for the foreigners, but asked why when local people disappear in the area, little is often done for weeks, months or years. Do you have to be a foreigner in Baja, California in order for there to be an investigation if something happens to you? Every investigation is different, and Radhi Ramirez replied. Oh dear, somebody, so on that um, vigil, 
you know, dozens of mourners, surfers and demonstrators gathered in a main plaza, that's a square, main square, in Ensenada, the nearest city to voice their anger and sadness at the deaths. Ensenada is a mass grave. Dear me. Uh, read one placard re uh, carried by the protesters. Australia, we are with you. One man scrawled on one of the half dozen surfboards. And a woman held up a sign that read, they only wanted to surf. We demand safe beaches. Okay, so that is the very sad story. And as I say, the lesson is, if there is any lesson, uh, you know, my prayers go out to the family now, as well as obviously the ones that died. The family, the ones that are going to have to live with it, aren't they? So it's so very sad. Um, but yeah, if you're going abroad, if you're going to especially countries like Mexico, you know, you can, you know, it has got that reputation. You know for being a dangerous place they just you know people from mexico were just saying that so just be careful either you or maybe tell your kids your adult kids that go traveling just do their homework and hopefully these sort of tragedies just seem so pointless doesn't it you know for some tires or for whatever it was for you know drugs some guys drugged up killing those three men just for nothing you know not um just seems also <laughs> i don't know what the word is you know all just seems so unnecessary you know it wasn't necessary but anyway okay so remember to live in love wisely carefully if you go traveling, go traveling. I'm not saying to people don't go traveling, though personally I would not go to Mexico. But if you want to go to Mexico, go to Mexico, but just be careful, you know, do your homework, keep your wits about you. One thing I've found about people when they come to Spain, and, and it's not as serious as this, but people leave there, I, I say they come out like with their holiday brains. They do things here that they would not do where they come from. You know, you wouldn't leave your door open. You wouldn't leave your door unlocked where you live. But people come out here to Spain on holiday and they seem to think nothing can happen to them when because because the sun's shining, they won't get robbed or you know they won't get the bag snatched or so you've got to be just as vigilant as you would be anywhere wherever you go. Okay, so I'll see you really soon in the next video. And until then, may your God go with you. Bye.